so one that's a bit more uh, contemporary. Uh, what book by Atul Gawande may have saved more lives than any other book in history? Uh, this book has affected procedures from the cockpit to the operating room. So who is Atul Gawande and why is he important? Interesting, very interesting story. He was talking about how they were having a lot of uh, fatalities in the operating room. And the way it was working back then was that uh, you would get about uh, six, seven years under your belt. Then you'd go into the operating room and just kind of go with gut instinct and uh, make your decisions based on your experience, et cetera, et cetera. He said that we were losing people that we shouldn't be losing. There must be some better system. It became very complex and very complicated. I wonder, he said, how the people over in the airline industry handle the same situation because they have to make split-second decisions. They have very complex uh, our procedures they have to follow what what they've done to handle the same kind of challenge. He went over and talked to the people at Boeing. The checklist system. It went back to a, a, a an ancient tool, the humble checklist. Mm -hmm. And so it became procedures. There was these thirty seven items, the forty one items, whatever it is. Check, check, check. So there's not you could, human beings can only think about one thing at a time, and all these complex things that have to be done if they don't make sure. They're correctly thinking about it at the right time in the right way. They miss one and just missing one can cause the airplane to crash and cause mm -hmm. death. Well, they implemented that in the late, the middle to late 1930s. Made a very big, big difference. It's now the standard operating procedure for many, many years. And a lot of novice pilots at the beginning of World War II probably had their lives saved because they had this, uh, this checklist system. Well, they, they took it and they adopted it in the operating room and it had miraculous results. Uh, the uh, fatalities were uh, reduced by 36 wow. percent. Oh, by the way, another right. thing I'd like they discovered that when everybody in the operating room introduced themselves and everybody knew everybody, that the uh, fatalities also went down. A doctor was more willing, to, uh, people more willing to speak up to the, the doctor if they've been met and some so forth like this. That communication with the checklist system now is the center procedure throughout the, throughout the world. Uh, because they opened that uh, October one day, and the uh, name of the book was the uh, uh, the checklist manifest, mm -hmm. which uh, which is a uh, way of avoiding tiny mistakes that lead to uh, good letters. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So let's turn to uh, some interesting questions that arise from your particular view of history. <laughs> one is uh, the war in Ukraine, very very much in the mm -hmm. news. The question everyone is afraid to ask, or maybe they're ashamed to ask. What is that question? Well, it's a, yeah, this gets uh, uh, political, but uh, the argument can be made that because of the botched situation in uh, Afghanistan, the impression was given that the uh, American leadership out of the White House was uh, weak and timid and uh, not well informed. That, that's certainly Mr. Older, Trump's uh, opinion. <laughs> yeah, yes, certainly is. And you, couldn't, you, couldn't have, you could make a, a serious case about that. The, uh, of course, Putin was said, now's my chance. Right. And so he, he, he had taken over uh, the Crimea during the uh, Obama administration, who was showing soft side to Russia. And then, of course, the I mean, confidence side was showing that to Mr. Putin, this is the chance because they're too weak to do anything. And the Ukrainians surprised everybody by being very, very tenacious. And here we are in this war that is grinding on. I, I really get political. I do think it is time to. Uh, you know, Phone is not wrong. You're going to call this my opinion uh, for the Trump administration or the White House. But I think it is time to end the war. It's going to be very difficult to drive the Russians out of uh, eastern Ukraine, the Donbass region. Uh, there, it's going to be very costly. The war can drag on another three or four or five years. I think we let, in my humble opinion, allow uh, Putin have his 18% of the country. Uh, the uh, Ukrainian savior, 82%. And it's in the war. Uh, what's it? A thousand people dying. I think to no purpose. Yes, and it, and the and the war is escalating, isn't it? I mean, uh, the Americans are being drawn more and more into it. Uh, our country, Canada, just committed more money to it. Uh, and and the strange things are happening too. In that, uh, Mr. Zelensky uh, just went on a very odd tour uh, throughout the United States, essentially expressing support for the Democrats. Uh, which sounds a lot like foreign election interference. Anyway, speaking of the Democrats, one other question: mm -hmm. uh, how how the Democrats defraud Black America? How does that work? 
Yeah, that's a whole article. It is very political. But uh, but uh, the saying there in the article is that they pretend to be able to support the black or support the black community, but they do things that are very contrary to the black community. Uh, a lot of the uh, immigrants uh, coming in, immigrants are taking jobs away from the people of the black community. Crime has exploded and it's exploded primarily. So it's exploded, so it's, it's, it's increased substantially. It's increased primarily in high crime areas. The people who are victims of those crimes are. are Black individuals, so the, uh, the, the Democrats say yes. We're you're your people. We're supporting you. No, you're not. They make their neighborhoods very, very unsafe. They take a lot of their jobs away. Uh, you were doing things that cause uh, inflation. That's another one. Okay, inflation hurts people at the lower middle and lower economic stratas than it does uh, other people. Uh, that you know, hits black people very hard. So black people, black citizens, are worse off for voting for the Democrats who have uh, did the policies that. Do not benefit the black community at all. They are having a hard time hanging on to the black male voters, in particular the black female voters, are strong, strong black for the Democrats. But the uh, male is a lot of them losing a lot of those because they're saying, "Hey, back during Trump, the economy was a much, much better." A key point there is that real income went up very substantially during Donald Trump. The average household gained seven thousand dollars in net real income. Real income has gone down. Under the Biden administration, uh, the, uh, the increase in wages has not kept up the increase in uh, food prices and gasoline prices and housing prices. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've done a very poor job. But I think that we have a situation where the national news media is so extremely powerful. Yes. They are extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. and they can control the thinking of a lot of people who, are quite honestly, are not necessarily that well read. They kind of form the current impression they have lived with us and David Muir or people like that, sorry to say that, mm. and that they could be swayed one way or the other by a heavy campaign from the liberal news media. Mm. So that's one of the big challenges mm. that we face. Yeah. So there does seem to be a valuable point there. Uh, it's not bringing up the best of the black community in uh, many ways. Yeah, yeah and, and to make matters worse, um, when you start to listen to this sort of the radical leftist idea about, uh, you know, systemic racism, these qualities that you described that uh, many black families and many black people in America possessed, uh, at least in more abundance prior to 1965, are now being attributed their, their sort of race, their, their, their white qualities, you know, to be conscientious, to be consistent in your habits, to be hardworking, to be on time. All these things, yes. all these things are, are bad because they're associated with quote unquote white, white. right? White perfectionism yeah. is a sign when it's uh, uh, racism. I like that. Uh, she was. And, uh, some things are discouraging, but uh, we have black men, uh, I think, who have to go out and earn the paychecks. They're the ones who are uh, turning to the Republican Party. It could be <clears throat> that uh, uh, we can still save the country and we don't uh, keep sliding in the wrong direction. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. Um... I'd like to just wrap up with our reading list and just to recap for people, it's a really extraordinary hour uh, with Jared. Now, I've learned so much. I mean, and I, I mean, I, I took a minor in history, folks. I almost took a graduate uh, course in, in history and I've learned all the stuff that I've heard today is basically new to me. So which is fantastic. I love it. My brain is just, my brain is popping right now when from talking with this gentleman for an hour. So I'm so grateful to have him on the show. Uh, but he's written two uh, incredible books. Really, uh, one is a sequel to the other, as I understand it. The first one's called right. Tiny Blunders or Big Disasters, 39 Tiny Mistakes That Changed the World Forever. And we've heard about a lot of them today. And then the follow-up one just released, Tiny Blunders, Big Disasters, Book Two, The Many Tiny Mistakes That Changed the World Forever. Uh, and these books are, are available anywhere that you buy books, uh, Amazon, elsewhere. Uh, and uh, the yes. author is here. We, people can also find you on your website too, right? Correct. If you go to uh, tinyblundersbigdisasters.com, tinyblundersbigdisasters.com, you see the, uh, we have uh, two and a half free chapters there. We have a portrait gallery there. Uh, we have the quiz that you mentioned there. And uh, you can uh, I order the first book or the second book. We were in the second book or the first book right now. Brilliant. Well, Jared, I want to thank you so much for being our special guest here and uh, having this sort of walk through uh, the annals of history. Uh, Enjoyed it very, very much. Thank yeah, you, sir. Thank you.